Okay, perfect. All right, I'll start letting people in. Okay. Let's see here. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Great to see you all. Here we are, another for another round of this very special event. Um, really appreciate seeing everyone here. I'll, I'll let us sort of filter in for the next moment or two, and then we'll, we'll rock and roll. We'll jump right into it. I'll make an introduction to our, our guest, who you might have heard of before, um, a young man named Steve Brady. Um, but yeah, I'll introduce him if, you, if you're not familiar with this fellow. Okay, couple more folks in and we'll jump into it. Ethan? Yeah, Carl, welcome Carl. Can I say a word before we start? You can definitely say a word well, before we start. Yeah, Steve and I were talking beforehand and we'll be saying some words probably at the end as well, but you're welcome to, yeah. Well, I just wanted to say this because I was gonna put a link in. Um, Go for it. Greet, greetings to all of you. Um, many of you probably do not know, but um, host of this show, David Anderson, has been very sick for quite some time. He's been battling Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma, and it has taken a, uh, a turn for the worse. He's in very bad shape. He's returned home for hospice care yesterday. And uh, thankfully, his family and his wife are incredibly attentive to him. But I'm, I'm going to put a link in the uh, chat for a GoFundMe that his, uh, that his wife's daughter started for him yesterday. Um, they're getting extra nursing help and all of these things. And anything that anyone contribute, can contribute will be very appreciated. So I'll, I'll leave it to Ethan and Steve if they want to make any further remarks, but this is a, a sad day in, in Mudville, really, really is. And um, uh, he, he's been so great to so many of us. That, that's all I wanted to say, Ethan. Thank you so much for sharing, Carl. And I'll hold on to that link. I mean, put it in the chat now, but also we'll put it in at the end just so people have more than one chance to um, check that out. And I think it would be great at the end of the session, um, we'll take a minute, uh, we'll, we'll go over a little bit, and we'll take a minute for anybody really that would like to um, just say something to, uh, to David, send a message. Um, so you can come up on screen or audio or whatever at the end of the session um, to just send him your best thoughts and wishes. And um, I'll keep the recording of that and make sure that it gets to him ASAP. I'll send it over as soon as it's downloaded. And I'm sure that he and his family will really appreciate that. So um, speaking of recording, I didn't start recording as my backup yet. So I will get that going. And then we'll jump into the session. Thank you, Carl, for that. Okay, so welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour. Again, this is brought to you by Piano Technicians Master Classes. We bring you cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home. You can find out more about that program at pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. And on today's program, we're going to be featuring Steve Brady. And he's a really cool fellow he's been here a few times and i'll give a quick bio on him just to remind you uh, what he's been up to uh, steve's played the piano since the age of eight uh, after receiving an as degree in piano tech from byu he began his career as a piano tech in the phoenix area he later served as a head piano technician at the university of washington in seattle for 25 years currently the most highly awarded piano technician in the pacific northwest Steve received the PTG Member of Note Award in 1996, was inducted into PTG Hall of Fame 2012, 2016. 
he received his profession's highest honor, the golden tuning hammer. Uh, Steve understands what a piano needs to make it play and sound like the instrument of your dreams. That is probably a lot to live up to there, Steve. (laughs) I took off my website, you know, (laughs) meant to appeal to prospective clients. Of course, yeah. Probably a lot less interesting to piano technicians. But uh, I'm really honored to be here, happy to be here. Uh, We're coming out of a, a very dark time with the, the pandemic and everything, it seems to be easing up now. And uh, I'm hoping things can get back to some sort of normalcy before too long. I don't have a big presentation today. I, I did bring photos of some cool tools that are uh, that some of you may not have seen before. You may have, but uh, I find them all really helpful. And, uh, you know, I could start with that and then we could go into some Q and A if if that works for everyone. Yeah, and let's and speak now or forever. Hold your peace. But I think that that would be a great plan. We'll we'll dive into those tools. And if you've got any questions or, or thoughts, um, you can start putting them in the chat earlier, and we'll jump into to conversation later. I know Steve did has done a did a great lecture on um, damper work for us recently too. Any any uh, afterthought questions on that? are welcome as well. Okay, so first of all, and I'm gonna get into a share screen mode. Um, I'm gonna have to give you access. Give me one second here. Okay, you're good to go. Okay, this is a tool. I did a a master class a couple of years ago and uh, this is one of the tools I shared which I thought that maybe a lot of people were already using this, but I've found out since then that uh, maybe that's not true. Uh, I've found that some people, when they have have a broken string to replace in a piano, uh, will just back the tuning pin out three turns and stick the end of the wire in and then uh, coil it up. That's how I did it for the first uh, probably 10 years of my career until the brilliant mind of Bill Spurlock came up with this wonderful idea. Um, So I'm going to share screen now and get over to some photos. And so here's the thing, Uh, how's this? Okay. If you, if you already pre-coil the wire before you put it on the tuning pin, that's great. Uh, that way you only have to back the tuning pin out by what, about a half a turn. But if, if you're gonna do that, you need to carry a dummy tuning pin, right? And a tuning pin crank. So uh, Bill's idea, which is just brilliant, was to take a piece of quarter inch brass rod and cut it to length, something about like that. Now I'm starting this with a uh, a triangular file just to notch it and then see if I can find the next photo. How do I do this? Okay. And then I take a hacksaw and just cut the thing to length. Now I take it to my grinder and kind of round off the rough edges. And so I end up with something that looks like this and I've rounded one end of it. Then I take it to my drill press and this is a drill press vise I uh, mark it with a a hard, uh, I I guess you would call this a center punch, uh, just so that the drill bit won't just slide off when I start drilling it. Leave a little dimple like that. And then uh, go ahead and drill a hole through it. Uh, The hole needs to be, you know, big enough to accommodate 
fairly large wire, but it doesn't need to be huge, but you don't wanna make it too small either. And then when I've got that hole drilled, I set the thing vertical and just drill a dimple in the end. That makes this into a multi-purpose tool. Uh, so I use this for spacing keys at the balance rail pin. You can just set this dimple over the top of the pin and then, uh, you know, knock it over. So this is how the tool looks uh, when it's ready to use. So you just, you chuck it up into the uh, combination handle. And to do that, you need, uh, okay, there's a, a picture of the dimple. And the other end, uh, when you're on the grinder, you want a bevel. So it'll fit into your combination handle. But this uh, is so great. Number one, it's a multi-purpose tool. Uh, number two, it, it replaces two things that you would have had to carry if you're going to do it the right way. And in my mind, the right way is to only back the tuning pin off a half turn and then pre-coil the wire, um, either on a dummy pin or on this tool. So this becomes the dummy pin. And you turn your, th your three turns on it and then pry the becket out and just slip it right off. Since it's only a quarter of an inch, it's, it's small enough that the wire comes off pretty easily. So that's number one tool that, I mean, I've been using for a long time, but uh, I'm not sure how many people are using this now. I, I know when Bill Spurlock first came out with this idea, a lot of us started using it, but I'm just not sure how that has gone since but I highly recommend it. Okay, number two, this is uh, leveling keys. Uh, the traditional way to level keys on the bench is to take these clip-on leads, which means number one, you really wanna put on some kind of a glove so you're not you know, getting a lot of lead oxide on your skin. It can be very bad for you. Uh, so this is a great idea that I saw at a convention a few years ago. I can't even remember which convention or who <coughs> was passing this around. <clears throat> but this idea has saved, has a, cut my key leveling time in half. So what we've got here is a long rod with approximately eight or 900 fender washers going from end to end. So instead of laboriously putting a, uh, a weight on each back check, and then if you're like me, I only have 52 weights anyway. So then I have to start moving them when I want to level the black keys. Uh, so you save a lot of time by just lifting this thing and it is pretty heavy. Uh, and just laying it over the back ends of the keys in that little notch at the back end of the key. Uh, here's a close up. But the, the nice thing about this is these uh, washers are a little bit loose on the rod so that they can easily slip up and down as needed. And so you get even weight across the whole keyboard. Here's what the end of it looks like. So I think this is a 5 uh, brass rod that I just happen to have lying around in my shop. Then you take your, your taps and dies set uh, and you, you take a die and you thread the end of the rod and put a nut on it. You can put a lock washer or whatever you want, but uh, I find it's really not necessary. But uh, it's pretty easy to make. The biggest challenge was getting eight or 900 fender washers. I had to go on Amazon several times uh, and, and you know, I would order like all the boxes of fender washers they would sell me. You, you do need to find washers where the 